Where are you going? Hey, hey. Ready to need the bed? Hey guys, it's DIY Wednesdays and that means we're going to be doing something with our hands. And today I'm going to show you how to make these two really cute decorative pillows. The one on your left is the easiest out of the two because all you have to do is know how to cut out a bunch of circles. They don't even have to be symmetrical if you don't want them to be. The one on the left is a little bit more finicky. You're going to have to learn how to make some ruffles. And I will demonstrate on how to hand sew in both of these because I know a lot of you guys don't have sewing machines at home. Alrighty, so let's get started. I'm going to use faux suede for this. You can use any fabric of choice, but do a fray check by pulling on the raw edges just to make sure it does not fray otherwise you'll have a lot of headaches in the future if you're not using suede you can surely use fleece it's pretty inexpensive and you can find it at a lot of craft store or fabric store so my pillow is going to be about 15 by 15 inches but I'm going to add an inch to the measurement so I went ahead and cut out a 16 by 16 inch square this way I will have enough seam allowances to sew go ahead and cut them out and face them right sides together Next, I'm going to draw in half an inch seam allowances on all four sides of my square. Then I pin the two pieces together going all the way around. Now I'm going to mark a small opening on one side for my stuffing. It's about three or four inches wide. Go ahead and sew all the way around and making sure you are not sewing up the opening. For those of you without a sewing machine, you can do something called a back stitch. Basically, you'll start about a quarter of an inch ahead of your starting point. Now bring the needle back a quarter of an inch and make a stitch right at the starting point. Now bring the needle towards you again a quarter of an inch away from the first stitch. Bring it backwards and place the needle where the first stitch was. Bring the needle towards you again a quarter of an inch away from the previous stitch. Bring it back and push it through the previous stitch again. This is called a back stitch, even though you're stitching backwards, the thread is going forward. This is a much more secure stitch than doing this. And this is where you go up and down onto the fabric, and this is called a stabbing stitch. So to see the difference, the top is the back stitch and the bottom is the stabbing stitch. So once you are done, flip the pillow inside out. If you have any extra fabric left, go ahead and cut them into two inch wide strips. Sew them all together so that it's one long strand. On the edge of the long strip, create a stabbing stitch across the length of the strip of fabric. Remember to pull when you do this so it creates a ruffle. Leave the needle and the thread on because you might want to loosen the ruffle a little bit when you're working with it. So now place a dab of glue onto the center of the pillow and create a small swirl with one end of the ruffle. Press it down onto the glue. Now you'll just keep working the ruffle around the center one. Just keep gluing and pressing the ruffle into place. I sometimes loosen the ruffle up a bit because it can be too thick and this is where the extra needle and thread will come in handy. But you can play with the effects. You can have a really thick ruffle or you can have a really loose one. So for the end, I just tuck it into the nearby ruffle and I just hide it by placing some glue on it and pressing the ruffle down onto it. So yay, we are done with the first one. So for the gray pillow, I just cut out fabric strips and I fold it so it looks like a little square. And then I cut out a stack of dots. Don't worry if your dots aren't even from stack to stack. They'll look fine once they're all glued on. So now I just glue the dots onto the pillow overlapping each other. I figured that it was faster to create glue dots onto the pillow and press each fabric circle down. You'll just keep overlapping each other until you have four rows of dots. Then I flip the pillow over and I repeat this on the bottom with another four rows of dots. For stuffing, I'm going to use a pillow. Go to Walmart and buy the cheapest pillow you can find. I think $2.50 is the cheapest I have found. Don't buy stuffing at the craft store because it's a total ripoff. Anyways, I fill up both of the pillow with stuffing through the opening from earlier. And to close up the opening, I just make a stitch on one side. Then I grab a stitch from the other side of the fold and I go back and forth until the pillow is closed up. I secure my thread and check it out. Two really adorable pillows for my tiny sofa. So what do you guys think? I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. And if you're gonna give this a go-go and you want me to see the end product of your handiwork, remember to shoot me a photo to my Instagram or Twitter and always hashtag it with S-L-O-A-B-N. Otherwise, I won't be able to find it and feature you in the next DIY video. If you think I am an awesome DIY queen, remember to like this video, subscribe to me because I'll do a lot more DIYs in the future and you don't want to miss them. If you stay tuned for this Friday, I'm going to do a very short and miniature haul for the Probo Garon collaboration with Target. 
it instead of hauling for you guys I think I'm gonna call it quality checks because there's a couple of things about this collaboration that I'm a little bit disappointed about and I want to talk more about how to find quality and how to make good compromises when it comes to price points as well so I'm gonna start talking a lot more while you guys get to admire all the works over here it's been really annoying because this guy is trying to fix his home or something and I'm constantly recording in between hammer bangs I commute 30 minutes between my parents home and my home because my sewing space is here and this is where I spend most of my time when I work and record my videos and I want to know what kind of weird things have you guys seen while you're driving on the highway I mean I've seen a big truck full of chickens before horses that's pretty normal right um, oh I really love seeing those windmills but when you see them far away they're so delicate and they're so pretty but up close they're just these massive like giant wings and I don't know maybe I'm just a little bit too excited when I see windmills if you're driving and you have seen something strange please let me know down below Ugh, I'm so weird.